How's it going everybody? Ecom Tommy here with another video coming at you guys. In this video today, I'm going to break down skew grid. I know this is one big topic that nobody ever really talks about and it's probably the most asked about topic ever that I've ever received in the last year or so. And it's how to set up skew grid settings step by step. So that's exactly what I'm going to do for you inside of this video. You know, everybody has issues with skew grid. Even I have issues sometimes with skew grid, but once you get it all set up, it is actually very straightforward and very streamlined. It's a great program, but everybody hates on it because it's hard to set up. And that's exactly what this video is for. So be sure to watch the entire thing. Watch it all the way to the end. Don't skip through. Don't skip to different parts of it because you will miss something. You need to do everything perfectly with skew grid or else your items might be repriced in and out of stock. And why skew grid first off? Because skew Grid has 470 plus, maybe even 500 now, US based retail dropshipping suppliers. So the, the biggest competitor out there, I think, has like six or seven, maybe 10. Skew Grid has 470 plus suppliers. So it's going to be one of the best repricers out there for you because not only is it very versatile, but also there's tons of different suppliers for you to diversify your business and not go where everybody else is going. So please stay tuned, watch this entire video. Before we get into it, also be sure to like this video, get it out to as many people as possible that are struggling with SKU Grid. And there is a free mini course down below if you want to learn more about eBay dropshipping in general. And also check out my new Instagram down below. I've been posting every day on it. So let's get inside of my computer. Let's set up the settings finally once and for all for your entire account, get it all prepared and ready to run SKU Grid. So I'll see you inside. All right, so here we are inside of my computer inside of a brand new SKU Grid account that I made for this video. So first off, when you do sign up, you get a free eight day free trial right now, I guess, not a seven day free trial, it says eight day free trial. So that is cool. You also do get unlimited repricing tokens and whatnot, and we'll talk about some of that in a bit. So I have my other SKU Grid account, my, one of my personal accounts actually brought up on my other monitor. So if I'm looking over here, then that's just me looking at my other monitor right now. So first off, this is called the dashboard. It pretty much breaks down everything. You really don't need to know anything about the dashboard while we're at it. So first off, you need to go to my items and my items, this is pretty much what's called the grid. When you start adding items into here, which will be another video, then pretty much they'll all start going into here. And this is how you know what's in stock, what's out of stock and whatnot. So this is where your credits will be. And that's pretty much, it's infinite right now. But if you do sign up with the affiliate link down below, I believe you get 20,000 free credits. If you use my affiliate link, which I think is going to be about a month worth of repricing if you first get started, it really depends on how many items you have and what are the reasons to be using skewer not only is there tons of different suppliers how versatile it is it also has two different methods of non api repricing so you can utilize either or the chrome extension or the file exchange token and also the fact that it's extremely cheap skew grids bare minimum plan is like 15 dollars a month and you really don't need much more than that when you first get started so it's not one of those expensive softwares you don't have to worry about it it's extremely cheap very versatile and it's my favorite software out there that i found to date for drop shipping in general it's better in my opinion i think it's more unique and versatile than Zik Analytics, even though they're not the same type of software. I really just like it all together. I think it's one of the best softwares out there. So you're going to click on settings and that's pretty much where everybody has the biggest issues. So this is going to be set up to, you know, just try to get you as, as well set up as possible, but you can go and change your settings from here. So first off is going to be check a supplier item every. So if you have a very high frequency changing supplier like Walmart or God forbid you're doing Amazon onto eBay, you're going to want to change this to every hour. I have it every three hours because the suppliers I use aren't very, um, you know, volatile. They don't change that much. So that that's up to you right off the bat. You know, this is where your credits are going. It's checking the items at the suppliers. So all SKU Grid's doing is checking your item, your supplier's URL to your item on eBay. You're going to say this supplier's URL is the same as this item and, as long, and you hope that they're the same because you said that they are and it's going to just check it back and forth, make sure the price doesn't change. If it does, change it on eBay. If it goes out of stock, change that on eBay as well. That's pretty much the whole premise of SKU Grid. It's a repricing and stock keeping tool. I also have a video that's a SKU Grid overview, which I'll link up above that you can check out after this if you're not too familiar with what SKU Grid is. So how many items to display per page? So that's basically on your grid, like I showed you how many. I just have it at 5,000. It's going to be the max out there. Uh, stretch grid to full screen. I have yes. Vacation mode, no. Maximum days before dispatch at supplier. So this is actually pretty important. This is going to go hand in hand with whatever your shipping settings are. You know, it, it's going to check your supplier, say Walmart, and it'll add it to the cart or whatever and see, you know, what the estimated handling time is for that item. So if one item says it's going to ship out in two days, then, you know, that'll, if you have seven days, then that's fine. But if one day item says it's going to take 10 days to ship out, that's over seven days. So it'll actually put that item out of stock on SKU Grid so that you don't sell the item accidentally and send it out. And if you do send it out, then you'll probably ding your shipping metrics. So I usually keep this to five. 
um, and that's usually a pretty safe place to put it. Display stock as color, sort order, I say record added, descending, that's fine. Complexity level, there is a there is a simplified version, I just do advanced, and then show the following columns and table, you can open this up. I have title, image, reference, uh, supplier, item, price, shipping, handling, stock, supplier, dispatch time. I uncheck estimated profit, it's not necessary. Reprice um, item and then supplier updated, uh, listing reprice, record added, yeah, and then number of days out of stock and tags. Tags, you know, you don't really, it doesn't really matter that much, but, uh, and action. So that's that for your general settings. Really not that, that important, but you know, one right here, this is important. And then also I would say, you know, the maximum days before dispatch of supplier, I would say that that's important as well. And then we're gonna go to store specific. Then it pops up Amazon and Sears and Kmart. I'm not gonna talk about this because really, if you click on it, you know, it, it, it has to do with drop shipping Amazon onto eBay, which we're not gonna be talking about. And then Sears, you know, and Kmart, it says what's the lowest price to display, lowest or buy box. It doesn't really matter. Um, you know, it, it's that's not the biggest issue here. So notifications, this is if you're gonna get, get email notifications from them, if you don't wanna connect into the non-API related version, some people like to get emails. Again, I'm not going to go through setting up how to get email notifications. I don't think it's worthwhile. I think it's a waste of time. I think it's a waste of using this software. Um, if you wanna do it, then just put your email in here. And at that point, you know, go fill out the rest of this. We're gonna get into the actual settings here. Profit formulas is actually not necessary either. So I feel like a lot of the reason why people have issues with SKU Grid is because there's so many different things here and they get overwhelmed, even though the majority of it is actually not necessary to you, at, you know, making sales, repricing your items or doing anything. So this is not necessary. This is just, you know, an estimated profit. And we already unchecked estimated profit from the general settings right here. And it's pretty much just giving you an idea of what the estimated profit, if this item was to sell is, but this doesn't, this isn't actually your profit formula for your, for your items at all. And then general repricer. So we'll go to general repricer. This is semi important. I wouldn't say it's that, that important. So I have off, off, yes. So basically it's safe repricing, super safe repricing, and then prevent items from being repriced below the current vendor price. You want this to be yes, obviously. You know, that's just a fail safe in case something messes up or if your equations are all wrong or anything like that, it won't go below the current vendor price, hopefully, as long as you set everything else up right. So safe repricing is if the item got back in stock, it should have been in stock at least 24 hours before being sold again. If the price is less than the current selling price, then it should not be less than 60% of the average price for the last three days. I don't really care about this. You could set this to yes if you want safe repricing. You could also set super safe repricing on. It is definitely a fail safe and a way to, to protect yourself a little bit more. But again, my items don't go in and out of stock that much. If you're using Walmart, maybe you might wanna look into this. So now really the only thing that truly matters is marketplaces here. One of the biggest things. And you might also get overwhelmed here when there's a bajillion different new marketplaces nowadays. They've been adding new marketplaces to sell on all the time, but we're going to be talking about eBay dropshipping here. So you're gonna be clicking on eBay and then you have to click add a country. You're going to want to add in the United States if you're from the United States. If you're from the UK, you want to add in UK. I'm not sure we have very many students from the rest of these places, but you know, if that's your if that's your country, that's your country. It doesn't truly matter either, but you you want to click the US. So we'll click save here. Now we are inside of eBay US marketplace and let's go on my other screen over to my other, um, to the marketplace. So first off it says, it's gonna be use the following third party solution to reprice eBay. So there's WooCommerce by Woo Hosted. That's gonna be API, we don't wanna be doing that. Ecom Syndicator, that's API. Cellro API, Ecom Dash is API and update via file exchange token. That's not API. You can either do the file exchange token or you can do the Chrome extension. I'm gonna leave that guys up to you. You know, it, it's really what you wanna be doing. You can click on this link right here to see which one is best for you. There's gonna be the Chrome extension plus file exchange, uh, manually use file exchange. I don't think that that's a good idea, so don't do that. It's either gonna be the Chrome extension plus file exchange or the file exchange token. I think the file exchange token is better, but it's really up to you. You can make the decision. I'm, I'm personally using the file exchange token. So if you were, you would click that, then you would get your exchange token by clicking this link, put in your eBay seller name and you're off to the races. Just follow this link and you'll get it. So then it says, use private IP of remote Chrome to interact with eBay. If you wanna use remote Chrome, you can. I believe it's about $20 a month. I do personally use it, um, but it doesn't really matter again. Basically what remote Chrome is doing is it's providing you with a VPN of some sort in your own static IP address so that when you have your IP address, you can, you know, it looks less sketchy to eBay that you're logging in from your own IP address, which, you know, SKU Grid sets up all for you. But you could use the shared IP address. It just means that you and other people 
people are going to be repricing and asking for your your files and stuff it's going to be sending from the same ip it says warning might look suspicious suspicious from ebay's side we have students inside of my course that you know they you know they, they don't they don't use the uh, remote chrome and they've been fine but again if you want an extra layer of safety i believe you can sign up right here it's twenty dollars a month i personally do use it so then default quantity this is going to be the default quantity of you know when an item gets listed up to your store you want this to be something that really reflects what your selling limits are on eBay. If you have low selling limits on eBay, like you just started a brand new account, you'll probably wanna keep your default quantity to one because every time you make it two or three, each item's gonna be a quantity of two, quantity of three, that's going to raise in, in your seller limits and you might max out your selling limits. So if your account's new, you wanna keep it lower. If your account's you know experienced or you have a lot, you know, I use default 10 usually or five. It really depends on where my account's at at that point in time or what account I am selling on. So that's just the default quantity. Of course, if it's out of stock, you know, Skewgrid will set it out of stock. It doesn't keep it in stock if it's out of stock. So that's up to you. You can pick one, 10, five, two. It's really up to where you are at with eBay. So update sold items to default quantity. I have this to yes. So as an item sells, hopefully sometimes this works, sometimes this doesn't work. You know, if it's set to 10 and it sells one, it goes down to nine it's supposed to be put back up to ten and that helps if you have any sort of volume pricing discounts you know if you say buy three and you get the special discount well if your your quantity is at two then somebody buys or if your quantity is at five then somebody buys three then you're only down to two nobody can buy three again if it doesn't get put back up to five so that's kind of a, a, a fail safe slash something that you really need in place so put this to yes and you know you you hope it works it, it sometimes it does have some issues so then reprice only if price uh increased by at least so basically if they're looking at walmart.com and your item 70 dollars and it increases by some amount you put in the amount that you want it to uh reprice so i put literally zero one cent so if it reprices by one cent then skew grid is going to send in a repricing update so basically this would be a way that if you didn't want to you know if it's if it changes two cents then don't worry about it. It's kind of a thing with, this would probably be more beneficial if you're dropshipping Amazon onto eBay because they change by one penny all the time. You know, again, I'm not going to facilitate or to say that you should be dropshipping Amazon onto eBay, um, but you know, that's up to you. So I put one cent up and one cent down. So if the price changes at all, you're going to be repricing the item. Then it says set price to be rounded to the following cents. I say do not round up. You know, some people like to round their prices so that it looks nice, like uh, 99 cents will be 10.99, 10.95, anything like that. I just have it random prices. I haven't really ever realized a big difference. I don't think it matters. So it says do not end out of stock items. Instead, change my price too. So again, that would be if it goes out of stock. Some people like it your price to just to you know be multiplied by like a thousand or you change the price to 10,000, that really messes with your selling limits. It says warning you may reach your selling limits with such an action. Just put this to zero. That means it doesn't use the function. If it goes out of stock, it will just put your stock to zero. It doesn't cancel the listing. It doesn't close the listing. It just puts it to zero. If it comes back in stock, it puts it back in stock. That's all you really need. Auto update eBay stock. You're going to want this to be yes because you want it to auto update your eBay stock. Only put items out of stock. Do not put them back in stock. That's disabled. I want them out of stock in and stock i don't want to be the one going in there and manually putting it back in stock it's pretty much a hassle then it says auto relist fixed duration listings note good till canceled listings are not relisted coming soon auto relist listings note good to canceled are relisted only via file exchange solution when suppliers out of stock fixed duration. what do i have here i have no so do not so we're not going to be doing fixed duration listings. We're going to be doing good till canceled. Um, what? What? Just put no. I, the answer is no here. Auto update eBay price. That's going to be yes. And then import new products that do not exist inside of SKU Grid. So this is really up to you. This is when it connects to your eBay store. If you have items inside of your eBay store already, which I'm assuming you do, then when you do that, it will pull your eBay items in, and all you have to do is then pair up your supplier's links to that. So I say yes here. It's going to pull them all into your grid, and then you can just like pair them up accordingly. And this is sync sales orders from order dash you don't you don't have to activate that feature it doesn't really matter it's api connected i don't think it really will affect your account but again it's really nothing that i want to be messing with so then it says calculate ebay's selling price so we're pretty much all done with the settings and you want to switch to wizard view so i'm going to switch to wizard view on my screen over here and we'll go through this so first off this is going to be a default. This is going to be the default the just selling price formula for all of your store. Below this, you can set up specific selling price formulas for different suppliers if you want to. We're not going to get into that. It's a little complicated. So 
Vendor tax. If you're getting charge tax, if you're not sales tax exempt yet, you're going to want to put in a number. If you're not sales tax exempt, I would put in about 8%. Again, I highly, highly, highly always suggest that people get sales tax exempt right off the bat because of the fact that everybody is doing it nowadays and you cannot really compete without it. But if you're not, you're going to want to add in about 8% because the sales tax throughout the United States averages or ranges anywhere from about five to 10, maybe even 11% in some states, I kind of forget, but you know, the average is right around eight and you wanna protect yourself. If you are tax exempt at your supplier or across the board, then just put zero. So I'm gonna put zero. Margin, what do you want your, your actual profit margin to be? 8%, 10%, 12%. I think a safe one to go with is 10%. Fixed margin in addition to percentage. I don't have anything here. You could put zero, you could just leave it blank. I leave it blank. Minimum margin, I've left that blank as well. PayPal and eBay fees is a percentage. So this is gonna be the percentage PayPal and the percentage eBay fees. If you have an eBay store, it means you only get charged 9.15% instead of 10%. And then PayPal is 2.9 if you're in the United States. So you wanna know what your actual percentages are for your PayPal and eBay fees. If you add 2.9 plus 9.15, you're gonna get 12.05%. And then this is PayPal and eBay fees dollar amount instead of percentage amount. You're gonna put 0 0.3 here because you are going to get charged with a 0.3, uh, a 30 cent transaction fee on PayPal no matter what. So it's PayPal is always 2.9% plus a 30 cent transaction fee. So that's covering that. Uh, selling slash other fees, we're not gonna have any of that. Just put a zero. And then include supplier shipping and calculation. You always want that to be yes, convert to different currency, no to no, I don't have that. So you wanna do save wizard for later. You can name it anything you really want, default. 10% and you know, we're pretty much almost done here. How much time do we have? I've been going for 15 minutes. So let's click close and apply. If you wanna add in another one, you can add in more wizards and they're all gonna come down here. You can click um, right here. This is where all the other wizards are. So you can change this up. You can make changes to it. Maybe this is your 8% one. You can click save wizard for later and you wanna name that one default 8% save. So now if we click right here, we have default 10% load default 8% load, there you go. So now we have multiple different wizards. Um, from here, if you wanted to add in, we're not gonna be doing third party repricing settings. It's not necessary, we do not need that. And then additional formulas, this would be um, based on your supplier. So say you're getting charged, say you're tax exempt at Walmart, but you're not tax exempt at another supplier, you can add in additional percentages based off that specific supplier. You would click the store and then you would add in a new formula. It's a little complicated at that point. That's why I'm not gonna go over it. I go over it inside my course. And then the buy box algorithmic repricing, we are not going to be touching. I don't think it's important. I don't personally do it. And eBay kind of gave up on their whole buy box owner program. So at that point, you pretty much have all of your settings. Do not forget to click save settings. You wanna click save settings and that's pretty much it. So we did the marketplaces, remote API. This is where you would get your remote API code if you were going to you know, use the Chrome extension and then add-ons. This is where you would get remote Chrome or anything else, the buy box owner program. Again, not really needed. Woo hosted, don't really need it. And then VA access um, if you have virtual assistants. So that is pretty much it. I tried to make this as quick as possible. Subscriptions is where you're going to go if you want to get any of these subscriptions. And again, one thing I've always teach my students is you really just wanna do pay per action guru and then just do a monthly um, and then just lower this down as low as you can go and then just do $15 a month. You're not gonna need much more than that. If you do, then I fully expect that you'll know what to do um, at that point in time. It means that you're decently professional at that point. So there's VA access, their suppliers is where you would find all your suppliers. And if you need something, you know, this is where they all are. These are all US based from here up, except for South Africa has one. And um, then there's trainings, you know, you if you're stuck at any point in time, just please click these trainings and learn. There's so much stuff out there. Everything's explained for you. This video is basically already out there through SkewGrid, but you know, I, I think I did it better. So if you did like this video, please let me know down in the comments. If you have any questions, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of questions. Ask them down in the comments below as well. If you if you want anything else on SkewGrid, please let me know what you want because I'm you know I'm I'm willing to make these videos. I, I've been planning on making this for a while. It just got pushed to the back burner, and here we are. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. What what do I got for time here? You know, hit it right on the dot. I was trying to get it under 20 minutes. So thank you guys very much. If you have any questions, let me know, and I'll see you in the next video. I hope this helped.